Hey, welcome back, folks. So, I recently replayed Pokemon Soul Silver and breezed through the first two gyms. Got to Whitney and made the mistake of thinking that surely, now that I'm a fully grown adult playing this kid's game, the notorious difficulty of this gym must be overblown, right? And I got seriously humbled with five trips back to the Pokemon Center. But it did get me wondering, what's the play here? What's the mathematically optimal way to beat Whitney? Or, hold on, sorry, sorry. Let's be real. What's the mathematically optimal way to beat Whitney's mill tank? We're not out here worried about that, Clefairy. So here's the rules. We're going with Generation 4 here, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and we're going to consider a 1v1 battle of your starter Pokemon versus Whitney's mill tank at the same level, which is 19. Mill tank has the scrappy ability, and our mons have their respective elemental boosting abilities. Miltank also holds a Lumberry, which allows it to recover from any status condition, something that's going to be important and really annoying when it comes to matchups against Kolava and Bayleaf, who have the tools to burn and poison, respectively. Armands will hold Humble Oran Berries, giving them a little bit more longevity. Armands are all male, which is statistically very likely, while Whitney's Miltank is obviously female, so Attract is a real threat here. We'll also prevent Whitney or ourselves from using any items from the bag on our mons. Now hold on, hold on, I know what you all are thinking. Of course in the real game you can bring up to six mons to deal with this mill tank. Use whatever items you want from your bag and Whitney also is going to get to use items. But here we're asking a much more fundamental question. If you are trying to deal with this absolute demon without catching any extra Pokemon, you want an epic 1v1 versus your starter? Which starter should you pick? And given that starter, what is the optimal strategy? We are going full on simulation to find out. And spoiler, it's going to involve simulating millions upon millions of battles and a clever method which learns from all of these simulations. But before we even start, take a second and think about your personal ranking of the three starters and what you think the best strategies are gonna be for each one. Let's start the story here with Miltank though. It's hard to know exactly what rules Miltank follows in the game to decide its next move, but this decision tree here seems like a pretty good proxy. We see that if the last successful move is Rollout, Miltank clearly must use Rollout again just because of how that move works mechanically. Otherwise, if it's the first three turns of the battle, Miltank has a chance to use Attract, Stomp, or Rollout with these likelihoods. If it's past the first three turns of the battle and Miltank is below 1 8th of its max HP, it has this probability distribution over these moves instead, giving it a chance to annoy us by healing up with Milk Drink. Finally, if it's past the first three turns and Mill Tank has enough HP, it's going to be Stomp with a chance of Rollout. The basic idea here is to give Mill Tank some intelligence, but not make it do absolutely the optimal thing at each step, characteristic of how Gym Leader bots typically behave in the game. But now comes the interesting part. Remember, remember that our goal is not just to figure out which starter is best, but also which strategy is best. Which decision criteria should we use when deciding what our next move is going to be at any turn in the battle? Let's take Bayleaf as our starter to explain how this all works. We're going to start answering this complex question in a really simple way. We simulate 1 million battles where Bayleaf makes just an absolutely random move from its 4 choices each turn. As you might expect, this doesn't lead to a very high win rate, just 3.4%. So why do we do it? Because even though most of these battles are absolute losses for us, there are enough that randomly go in our favor for us to learn what works and what does not work. We take those battles where we win, and we take a couple battles where we don't win, and put those aside for just a moment. To further jumpstart finding the optimal strategy, we're also going to add in a few battles which are not random, but go according to some really basic rules that I a so-so player made up. For Bayleaf, this naive but somewhat on the right track strategy involves using moves in this order. First, use Reflect to cut the damage from physical moves. Use a pair of Poison Powders to first get that Lumberry activated and then get Poison for real. Synthesis wants to heal up because we're probably a little low on HP at this point. Razor Leaf for some damage and then just randomly pick between Synthesis and Razor Leaf until the battle ends. Using this admittedly naive strategy, the win rate actually goes up to 13%. We again take those battles where we win and some where we don't and add them to the respective sets from before with the random battles. Let's take stock of where we're at now. We have a big pool of battles where we won against the demon mill tank, either by random chance or by our naive strategy working out for us. 
And we have another pool of battles where we lost, either at random or by our naive strategy failing. We take important pieces of information from each turn of each of these battles, things like how much HP each Mon has, whether a mill tank is burned or it's poisoned, whether Bayleaf is infatuated, how many turns have gone by in the battle, etc. And we learn how to use those pieces of information to predict what is the best next move to make if we want to optimize our chances of winning. For those math nerds out there and non-math nerds who are just curious, we're learning a bunch of things called decision trees which are basically glorified yes-no questions about the pieces of information we have at each turn. It's just that the exact questions we ask are smartly chosen based on which pieces of information are helpful and which are not helpful when determining our likelihood of winning the battle. We learn a sequence of these trees, each one geared towards learning from the mistakes of those before it and fixing those mistakes. What we get in this process is called a gradient-boosted decision tree model. Not something you need to understand exactly, but hopefully this gives you a basic idea of what it's doing. It's a collection, a sequence of these decision-making trees which collectively help us decide what should our optimal next move be, given the game state thus far. And drumroll please, using this strategy our win rate actually improves beyond the 13% rate from our naive strategy to 23%. To put these win rates into context, using the random strategy, you would need to play on average 29 games before you win. Using the naive strategy with my really naive rules, you'd need to play about 8 games before you win. And using the learn strategy, we would need to play just 4 games before we win. That is the difference between your DS going flying across the room and it staying nice and safe. But let's get to the fun part. What is this strategy that we learned? We can start answering that by looking at which pieces of information were the most and least useful when it came to our strategy deciding its next move. We see that the absolute most, most important piece of information and determinant of success is whether we can get Miltank poisoned. Made even harder given that Lumberry, but it seems like that is something we need to get done, no matter what the cost, because that pressure that we apply is invaluable. The next two most important pieces of information are our own and Miltank's HP, very likely to understand the delicate balance of when to let poison finish Miltank off, when to use synthesis to preserve ourselves, and when we need to bust out a razor leaf to finish things off. Some other important pieces of information are whether we get infatuated and how many turns of reflect we have left, crucial to lessen the damage from stomps and rollouts through the course of the battle. But honestly, to get a real sense of the strategy, I opened up Pokemon Showdown, a truly amazing website so I don't have to bore you by just reading battle text. I loaded up Armands and played Bayleaf exactly, exactly as the strategy told me to. Let's take a look and I'll put the strategy's recommendations of using each move as the battle progresses. So we see the first thing Bayleaf does is tries to get that reflect up, which it does, lessening the damage from those stomps and rollouts. We get that first poison immediately healed up via the Lumberry. Our Orin Berry comes in clutch here and activates. Then we get that second poison, which is going to apply that pressure over time. And now something really interesting happens, which is we just run a big set of synthesis, or syntheses perhaps, because we know that that pressure is being applied. The strategy learned that while that pressure is being applied, all we need to worry about is keeping ourselves healthy enough and letting that poison gradually do its job. Now, I'll admit in this video and the ones we'll look at for the other starters, we're getting a little bit lucky in the sense that that attract and milk drink did not activate here, so we had less threats to worry about. But you see that when Miltank gets down to about this red HP, that is when we bust out the Razor Leaf, knowing that that last bit of poison is going to finish things off. But what about the other starters? 23% is the win rate to be. That's pretty high, let's see if we can do any better. The random win rate for Croconaw is just 1.2%, which is understandable because there's no intelligent logic going on here. The manual strategy here is super, super simple. We set up with a scary face to reverse the play order, make sure that we go first instead of Miltank. And then we randomly just pick between Leer to drop Miltank's defense and Bite to take advantage of that drop defense, and also the scary face from earlier to pick up flinches on Miltank. And also Water Gun for Stab. We get our win rate here of 3.6%. Definitely a little bit better, we triple our win rate, but still pretty low. We go through the same process of learning the optimal strategy, and we find that the optimal strategy has a win rate of 16.4%. 
a massive jump from before, but still definitely lower than what we got from Bayleaf, and it roughly translates to about 6 battles till we win one. Let's take a look at a battle where Crokinaw beats Miltank. So we see that we bust out the scary face immediately, which is going to let us move first, getting that Leer off, lowering Miltank's defense. I'll say really quick here that some of you might have picked up that Crokinaw should know Rage here instead of Leer, if we're just going by pure level up. I did try a set with Rage, but all the numbers just didn't work out as well, so we stuck with Leer instead of Rage. We get off another Leer, which has really gotten that defense down. We follow that up with an Orin Berry for some longevity, a Bite which critical hits and gets half of Miltank's HP, and another Bite which is going to finish things off, which also got a critical hit. Again, I'll admit that there was a good amount of luck in here, but we were able to finish that battle off pretty quickly, and that lines up really well with the top two pieces of information for Crokinaw's strategy, which are Miltank's HP and our own HP. Because Crokinaw, unlike Bayleaf, doesn't really have any way to increase its own HP besides that one-time Oren Berry, what ends up being most important to indicate whether we're going to win the battle or Miltank is going to win the battle is who has more HP at any given point. The third most important piece of information is Miltank's speed stage, which reinforces the fact that that scary face is super important to get off to activate that bite's chance of flinching, which was really important for us in winning that game that you just saw. Finally, Quilava, and let me just foreshadow by saying, poor guy. He's got maybe on paper the worst matchup given it's the only starter with a typing explicitly weak to one of Miltank's moves. We again simulate our 1 million battles, and for our naive strategy, we use Smokescreen once to get that accuracy of Miltank down, something that's going to be seemingly really important to break those rollout chains and make sure that we're not taking too much damage. A pair of Embers to hopefully fish for that burn, even though Ember only has a 10% burn rate and it doesn't seem very possible. A Leer to get Miltank's defense down, a quick attack to take advantage of that lowered defense and just kind of get a quick attack no pun intended, out there. And then we just randomly pick between embers and quick attacks till the battle is over. With random turns, we get just a measly 0.4% win rate. Very, very low. And the naive strategy does get it up a little bit, but only to 1.9%. An improvement, but it still means that we need to play 50 battles before we win one with Quilava using the naive strategy. But what happens if we go through the same learning process to find the optimal strategy? Well, what the strategy finds is that by far the most important thing is to drop Miltank's accuracy with Smokescreen. And surprisingly, it's not really worth the investment to get Miltank burned with Ember. Even though this would be great for our game, the setup here just takes way too long with the Lumberry and Ember's low burn chance to be really a viable strategy. We're going to be long fainted by the time we get Miltank burned in most cases. We're able to get the win rate up pretty significantly here, from 1.9% to 7.6%. It's a decent improvement, but still way lower than what we got with Crokinaw, and definitely way lower than what we got with Bailey. This translates to 13 battles needed till you get a win, definitely within DS throwing range. Let's take a look at a rare winning video for Quilava, and folks, it took me a really long time to get this footage. So you can see here, the first mission that Quilava has is get those smoke screens off to drop Miltank's accuracy enough. We heal a little bit, get that second smoke screen off, and Miltank is down to just 60% accuracy. Then it decides to start firing off those embers, gets that lucky burn, which of course gets cured. We try for the ember again, and we pick up that lucky burn twice. This, I have to say, is very, very lucky, folks. You can see those rollouts just doing crazy damage. It doesn't seem like we're going to win at this point, even with that burn, just looking at our HP. But you can see that we get a critical hit right there, that burn damage kicks in, and with another ember, that one also being a critical hit, we're able to finish off the battle. Now I do want to emphasize we got so so lucky in this battle and there were so many other battles where I got absolutely destroyed before this one so luck is a huge huge factor of Quilava's optimal strategy. I wouldn't even really call this a strategy, it's not so much Quilava doing the right things as getting Miltank not to do things that is characteristic of this strategy, but hey. It is possible to win with Quilava if you get that smoke screen up first and then just kind of pray and hope for the best. I think my main takeaway from this video is that even though we didn't find some hidden strategy that completely reinvents the playbook of what you can do with your starters versus Whitney's Miltank, 
We did unlock the ability to learn strategies in any given Pokemon battle, any given situation. And that's definitely something we can take into future videos to find hidden strategies in other situations. But here, if your goal is to maximize the odds of taking down Whitney's Miltank in a 1v1 epic battle using your starter, go with Bayleaf, start with a Reflect to cut that physical damage, and then your next mission is to get that thing poisoned twice. Once to use up its Lumberry, and a second time to get it poisoned for real. With that pressure applied, keep the Reflect up when it goes down, and use Synthesis for health when it gets low for longevity. And otherwise, sneak in those Razor Leafs, fishing for those critical hits with its heightened critical ratio. In around 4 tries, and hopefully fewer, you'll take that demon down. I kinda love this outcome because Meganium is commonly accepted as the worst fully evolved starter in the entire game, but this is a place where the Chikorita line absolutely shines and gets to show off its unique toolbox. Folks, this is by far the most ambitious video in our Pokemon series that we've made so far and I've gained a newfound respect for game developers with just the absolute crazy amount of code that I had to write just to simulate this seemingly simple setup. I know a lot of you'll ask me to share the code, and if I get this messy code cleaned up just a bit, I'll update the description of this video to include it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are always welcome below, and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful folks next time.